guys, welcome back to the Indie Wrestling Corner. What a special episode of Wrestling with Positivity. You guys haven't seen before, I did a video last year uh, and it just meant so much to me. There was so much input. Um, it's been crazy. I got such great feedback. The stories that I heard just like touched my heart. Again, please go back, watch that episode if you haven't seen it. Um, you know, I thought it was going to be like a one-time thing and a lot of people actually reached out and they had said that you should make this a series. You know, we need more positivity into the community and you know, what you did was very special. And I was like, I don't know, like, am I going to be able to like pull off like a series every once in a while? But I was like, yeah, we're going to do it because there is so much stuff that needs to be showcased. Uh, you know, this whole thing with wrestling positivity, I incorporated into all my under the rope series. I start asking all the wrestlers, promoters, referees, anything related to the independent scene. I start asking them, you know, you could see their face of, you know, their, you know, all the things that are going in their heads of like, which story are they actually going to share on these interviews, whether it was something that they did for somebody, whether it was something that somebody did for them. And you just, see it and like what it means and it could be the most smallest thing that somebody's done for somebody and this needs to be showcased so you know this is what i wanted to do it's very dear to my heart i've been trying to do as much clippings as i can to post it on the channel as long into the interviews again like i said this is going to be a series uh so every once in a while i'm going to pop up i'm going to ask for stories so anybody who wasn't part of this and wants to be a part of that i'm going to continue this maybe every six months or so um so if i didn't get you this time you know feel free you know we'll do another one for another another day um but everybody who's contributed so far, like, thank you so much. I mean, it's been amazing. Uh, the stories, whether I've recorded with people, whether people sent in written letters, whether it was just something that I sent into a DM and I just cut and posted into this video, like, thank you. You know, thank you for taking out the time. Thank you so much for being a part of this special journey with me. I yearn for this. Um, so I really hope that you guys truly enjoy, you know, what I've been doing. Uh, we just, we just need it. I, I love it. So, uh, so with that being said, I hope you guys enjoy this video. So we have a returning friend of the podcast, my good friend, Sky. How are you? <laughs> Not doing too bad. Not doing too bad. How are you? Good. Thank you. I'm good. I'm so excited that you're back here. Uh, so wrestling with positivity. I'm going to let you go. So tell us a little bit more about some of your experiences. So just in case uh, you haven't watched the first part, which I highly recommend, um, I suffer with a little bit of a backstory on me. I suffer with uh, an eating disorder and a few other little things. Um, and since starting my wrestling journey, I'm about two months in training. Uh, I've had to take some time off due to an injury, but I should be getting back into that soon. Um, but since I've had to take some time off and since I've been dealing with the eating disorder, wrestling has always kind of been my escape it's been where I go to for everything. It helps me with eating, helps me uh, just feel better. I feel like wrestling is an escape for everyone. Um, and for me, there's a lot of people that have helped uh, in my way to becoming a wrestler and in my way to, um, before I even wanted to become a wrestler. So the first person I'll start off with is Kennedy Copeland. Uh, I think everyone, uh, if you follow me on social media, you'll know that I'm a huge fan of Kennedy. Um, Kennedy is perhaps one of my favourite wrestlers. Um, and she's given me a ton of support since, uh, since oh, it's been ages. It's been a very long time. Um, and over the months, we've got to know each other better and we have sort of supported each other in many different ways and without Kennedy I wouldn't have even trained to become a wrestler. It was uh, Kennedy versus Mickey Knuckles mm -hmm. at Hardcore Kingdom 5 I want to say mm -hmm. um, 
and that match was the match that inspired me to finally ignite the fire and say, okay, let's give this a try and let's go for it. Um, another, so I've got to mention a company without mentioning the name of the company, um, but hopefully they know who they are. Um, when a couple of months ago, I was in a rough living situation. Um, I was with someone that I perhaps shouldn't have been, and they have supported me all the way through that, uh, offered advice, given support, and the roster members of that particular company have been very supportive, checking in, making sure I'm okay. And now that I'm safe as well, they still check in to make sure I'm okay and support me through anything I may be going through. So I'm really grateful for you. Um, Hopefully you all know who you are, <laughs> me being extremely discreet. <laughs> um, if we go over to the UK side of things for a moment, um, there's a, two wrestlers um, under the tag team name BDSM um, and Charles Crowley and Clementine. Two of the best wrestlers, I think, in the UK. Um, I had the pleasure of meeting them at Wrestle Carnival. Um, I was very nervous. I was very scared. I didn't want to, uh, I was very hesitant. I, I find meeting wrestlers, I'm very hesitant and scared. Uh, but I, I went up and they are just so supportive. Charles has helped me out, sent lots of support and genuinely is perhaps one of the nicest people um, I have ever interacted with. So both of them are just absolutely amazing and without them i prob probably wouldn't still be chasing my dream as much as i am now um where's the other one ah two more things okay so uh, another company that is in uh america is called wrestlers lab mm -hmm. now they are a huge helping factor towards me if they notice that something isn't right somehow, they'll drop me a message and check in and say, is everything okay? And they have offered so much support. There's been times when I've been wanting to give up and not wanting to continue. And they have sat and spoke with me for hours, making sure that I'm okay, putting me back on the right mindset, um, even using a clip of my wrestling where I was training and I said to my opponent, is that what you've got? And they used that and say, well, use what you've said in your journey. When you get knocked down, use that as, as your motivating piece. Um, so I just want to say a huge thanks to them because they don't have to help. None, none of these people that I've mentioned and the, the last people that I mentioned don't have to help, but they choose to and they go out of their way to so I really appreciate that. Um, and lastly, but certainly not leastly, uh, leastly, it's a new word, <laughs> <laughs> the Kirks, no. Brandon Kirk and Casey. Um, yeah, I don't know where I'd be without them. <laughs> Casey has been a huge, huge supporter. Um, I found out uh, via her, well, I found out about her via you, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and that I just started looking up matches, and it just yeah, I was like, I am absolutely obsessed with the Kirks, um, and one of my friends absolutely hates me for liking the Kirks, but that's cool. It's okay, I get that hate too. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, they're like, you're supposed to hate the Kirks. I'm like, no, you love the Kirks. What are you talking about? Um, but yeah, they've been extremely supportive and um, oh, bear with my camera. Um, Casey and Brandon have both been very supportive and um, Casey is perhaps one of, again, my favourites that uh, I will go to watch. Casey, Brandon, Kennedy um, are like people that I will go to watch if I'm in a really rough space. Um, today has been a rough day and funnily enough, before I joined this, I was watching, uh, Kennedy Copeland 
versus Matt Tremont. Mm -hmm. That was a great match. Um, But yeah, without everybody that was mentioned here, um, I don't know where I would be. So I just want to say that, uh, that I appreciate you guys a lot. And thank you for everything that you've done. So our good friend Anthrax is back. And he's got a great story for us. And I was also involved and I got to watch all this too, which was which was great. So unfortunately, I was at that show where you wrestled Low Life Louie. You fucked up your foot. Damn it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean the back is May 29th of 2021. And it's it's you know, it's a dream match. I think it's a, it's a dream match for any like aspiring deathmatch wrestler to face Louie. And the match is going great. And then, you know, I go up for the ending, and I'm like, I'm just, I'm going to jump off. I'm going to do it. Fuck it. YOLO. If the kids still say that. <laughs> uh, and I did it. And I ended up breaking my tibula and my, my tibia and my fibula. There you go. And dislocating my ankle. Oof. So, uh, but I still got the pin. I still won, if that makes me better. <laughs> That's what counts. <laughs> yeah. So you had surgery. Yeah, I had surgery. and uh, You were in the evil was, boot. <laughs> the evil boot, I was, as we call I was it. in the boot. Well, I was in the, the cast first. And yeah. It took like a week, about a week for them to actually get me in for surgery. So... Well, basically, I'm sitting in a cast, and they realigned my ankle, so it wasn't dislocated anymore. But I, you know, I still couldn't move or anything. I was basically bedridden for a week, and even plus after the surgery. Mm-hmm. But before the surgery, I really couldn't do anything. Um, but yeah, I had the surgery. Surgery went fine. Um, yeah, and then uh, do you want to do you want to like lead into this, or do you just want me to to, to go into it? Uh- whatever you want to do so like obviously even like be like i checked in a lot on you because like you i did. feel for you i had i had uh i had my share of surgeries on my feet so i get it um so i mean let's talk about the charity show with h2 well i mean before that uh right before the charity show happened like fans and wrestlers all reached out like and i i can tell you right now i wouldn't have i don't know it that's what kept me going was the fans reaching out you uh all the wrestlers like it was just one this made me feel good like i'm gonna get through this i'm gonna get through this and then matt reached out and was like i want to do a charity show for you and you know we're gonna call it no one is safe and then, you know, it happened. Um, and we raised quite a bit of money through merch and um, through ticket sales and all that. It was raffles, it was, all that fun it was, stuff, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was very overwhelming, to say the least. Uh, but it was, it was fantastic of them to do that. And I couldn't ask for anything more. Uh, so many people came out just to show the support and then we had a, you know, we had a show later on after that one too, but, um, you know, for them to come out because this was like an early show. It was like, I think it started at two o'clock maybe. Yeah. And they all came out as, you know, usually like early shows, they, you know, people have work and, you know, they don't want to come out to early shows, but they, they did. And they all came out and the card was, was a banger. Uh, the main event was Austin Luke versus Declan Grant, and that was one hell of a match. And Chondo faced Kennedy on that show, and I was pushed around, and I <laughs> hit hit Chondo in the head with a water jug bat in that match. <laughs> he was in the wheelchair, and they were using him as a prop. It was great. <laughs> you can find you can find this show in its entirety on IWTV, yeah. by the way. Definitely watch that show. This was Chuck Payne killed Duncan Malin. Like, murdered him unapologetic uh but yeah it was a fun show i would definitely check it out uh, because yeah it definitely helped me out a lot getting through everything um 
and even after that, the fans and and you and everybody, like me and you, have never lost contact. I think like we yeah. actually started yeah. talking regularly because of this whole injury. Yeah, we did. I think so. Yeah, it was funny. Everybody like Stan was another one, and Kid Osborne. You know, yep. I felt I felt yep. for those guys too, and I guess I have that sentimental feeling for when it comes to those injuries. <laughs> um, so so I know how much it sucks. Uh, but it's, you know, thank God, you know, for people out there and it just shows like all the people that care about you. Uh, so. yeah, yeah, they, it was, I did, that's the thing. It's like, I didn't really think anybody gave a shit, you know, just, but it was like, it's what got me through. Like, you don't understand if you've never been in that situation, you wouldn't understand like how depressing it really is just to be bedridden and not being able to do anything for your family yeah. And not even not being able to do the one thing you love, and that's like wrestling, and and like a piece of once once your the mindset hits, and it's like I might you know it's, I might not be able to wrestle again, or if I do, I might not be able to wrestle at the same way I did before. It's like you lose a piece of yourself, right. like just not even that's just being not being able like to take you know a slam or any of that stuff in the ring is just. Not being able to step inside the ropes, it's like it's 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 hard, it's hard, and just being bedridden and it's rough. Like, but you know, you're back with got, a vengeance uh, now. Yeah, <laughs> back I'm with back. a vengeance. <laughs> um, it's crazy. I I came back in like four months. That's just because I don't recommend that to anybody. <laughs> I don't recommend that to anybody. But I'm stubborn and thick-headed. And I needed to get back out there, uh, and I made a, you know, I made I made it a pretty fast recovery for myself, just pushing myself and pushing my limits, and just doing it for everybody, all the fans that you know wanted to see me. And when I came back, it was it was the greatest feeling. I don't think I'll ever forget that night that I came back, and I had smiled ear to ear as soon as I came through the curtain. and this is my wrestling with positivity video so starting off the first one is jt dunn jt dunn he's just an incredible person and wrestler altogether um he is such a kind soul um and uh i have a few stories about him one of them being uh the second time i ever saw him at wrestle pro in rawway back in 2019 this was before covid pre-covid um i had a poster and this is my first time ever going to Rawway. I was in the second row. I thought, well, people can't even see me. I was like, I need, and not to mention, I even know what Rawway was. Don't come at me. Um, <laughs> so I didn't know what to expect at this show. But JT made it memorable because I had this poster, a little, it was like a piece of paper, you know, computer sized paper. And I held it up and, you know, it's, uh, it said JT Don on it. To show my support because you know i came literally just for him and also allison k um but i came just for him and when he came out he made a point to show everyone how i was holding a sign up for him and he pointed to the sign and that just really meant a lot to me this was i think one of if not the second time ever um a wrestler has ever pointed to my sign so it really, really meant something special to me. And my dad even got that on video. So him doing that just really meant a lot. Not to mention he was a heel. So heels on point at this fan sign. So that just really meant a lot to me too. They still went out of his way to make sure to point at my sign. And uh, so um, another story I have is, so over COVID uh, quarantine, JT used to stream on Twitch. And I was there every single time he streamed. I was first to arrive and last to leave um and i created like sort of like a friendship with jt which i really am still grateful for the to this day um and 
I became pretty good friends with him through it, and I really appreciate everything he's ever done for me. Um, you know, it was one of my coping mechanisms to survive quarantine, because I thought I was going to lose my mind. I feel like a lot of us thought that, too. Um, <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, he was just such an amazing person, and to even add to the story of him being amazing, he gave me a gift. He, uh, after being there for so long, everyone in the chat came up with a joke saying, hashtag give Becca an elbow pad. Little did I know that was actually going to happen. So JT went ahead. He asked, he messaged me. I sent him the shipping details and I did not expect it, but he really did send me an elbow pad. So you can't really see it, but it says DVE death by elbow and he also signed it. So this was his elbow pad and he sent me it and I have it on my dresser and it's literally one of my favorite things that I own. It just really means a lot that he'd go out of his way to do this for a fan who supports him. The next person I want to talk about is Gregory Iron. If you don't know, he is, uh, until soon, the first wrestler, the only wrestler with cerebral palsy. If you don't know what cerebral palsy is, it, um, it's a disorder that affects your movement. Uh, but there's also different types of it. There can be mild cases, severe cases, you know. You never know who actually has it. Um, I have it. Uh, I have it when I walk. Uh, when I walk too far. Um, that's when it starts to kick in. Again, but this is a mild, mild, mild case of it where people have it much worse. The reason why I'm talking about cerebral palsy is because Gregory Iron is one of the reasons that I gained confidence that say, hey, maybe I can do this about being a wrestler. Uh, once I found out about him, I was like, hey, I'm not the only one, and there's a wrestler with cerebral palsy out there already. And that just really inspired me because I felt like if he can make it, why can't I make it? So he's just someone who I look up to. I think he's such an amazing person too. And he spreads awareness for cerebral palsy. I like to do that too, whenever I can. And I just admire him for that. Next is uh, Kennedy Copeland. I love Kennedy so much. The way that her style, the way that she's, you know, she's not your average girl wrestler. She doesn't come out all fancy with the big music and the red carpet. You know, she's a tomboy and I really admire that because I'm a tomboy. I'm not a girly girl like a lot of the girls are. Um, so I feel like I see myself in her where she's like one of the boys. Um, and, you know, she does hardcore stuff, and I am very afraid of hardcore stuff. <laughs> um, but I really admire her for doing that stuff, and I feel like it's just like woman empowerment right there because, you know, it makes us look stronger. And, yeah, I really look up to her. So I'm just going to throw in one more person, uh, bonus. <laughs> uh, Allison K. I love her so much. So uh, I mod for her on Twitch, but I would never be able to mod without that story, going back to when I met JT Dunn in Rahway, I met her as well. And I remember I was so nervous and I could barely even speak. Not to mention having a speaker right next to her table was not the smartest idea, not her fault, whoever set up her table's fault. <laughs> so it was blasting, she couldn't even hear what I was saying. I had to open up my notes app and I had to type out my name and what I was saying. And looking back at it, it's, you know, it's funny, it's silly. But it's just really, it was really awesome, you know, because she was still so kind, still understanding about everything, you know, be, me being nervous and everything. And now it's crazy because, like, I started off as a fan of her and now it's like I'm a friend of her. I look up to her a lot. I admire her and think that she knows who I am really just means a lot. And um, she also did some pretty special things for me. Ha! You like this, Becca? Yeah, I do. Ah! Oh! Hey! Give me that shit. Huh? So yeah, those four wrestlers are really my inspirations. Again, I have more, but those are the stories that I feel like are most fitting with this right now. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed my story. Um, wrestling really brings positivity into my life. It's my escape. And I hope one day to be a wrestler just like these people who I look up to. And I said before, Gregory Iron, he's for now the only wrestler for palsy. Watch out, Gregory. I'm on my way.
Thank you guys for watching. Peace. Go ahead. Hello, this is uh, referee DM Stevens here, and I wanted to share a story of uh, something that meant a lot to me uh, uh, in wrestling, uh, interaction with a fan. So back when I first started getting back into wrestling in 2019, there was a father and son in the front row of a show, and during intermissions, you know, engaging with people, seeing how they are, are they enjoying the show? And the father, you know, kind of was like, hey, you know, my son, when he grows up, he wants to be a referee. So I'm like, oh, that's cool. You don't hear that a lot with kids. And <laughs> everybody wants to be the big star, you know, main event WrestleMania or mm -hmm. insert event here. And <clears throat> he's like, yeah, this is really what he wants to do. He's always slapping the mat on the mattress and everything else like that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, OK, this is pretty cool. Like I used to do the same thing. Not that my dreams were to be a referee, but uh, that's what I would always do. So we would talk about, you know, when I was a kid, I would do that and what he does. And then the dad asks, hey, I, I really hate to ask you, but is there any way he can get into the ring and, you know, just slap the mat for a three count? And, you know, I'm kind of looking around. It's a fundraiser for a political campaign. And I said, sure, let's get you in. So we got him in. He just made a nice count. One, two, three. And people actually cheered. <laughs> people actually cheered for when the kid slapped the mat three, made it like, you know, somebody, you know, the baby face won the match. And, oh, man, the kid crawled out of the ring after that, all smiling, red face, you know, just like, oh, my God, people are actually paying attention and the whole bit. It's like, all right, that was great, you know, and talking him up. And, you know, the dad thanked me and the kid thanked me. And, you know, on, on I went. Then a few... Uh, maybe about a week or so later, I come to find out that uh, the father and I have a mutual friend. Mm -hmm. So he goes to me, he's like, were you at this location working this show? And I'm like, yeah. Did you bring a kid in the ring to, you know, slap the mat for three? And now I'm like, wait a minute, you're at this show and you didn't even come say hello? What the heck's wrong with you? <laughs> so, uh, no, and he's like, no, uh, I'm friends with the kid's dad and he told me what you did and um, that it was – that it really meant a lot to the kid to be able to experience that. And now it's only motivated him to want to actually become a referee, like even more so. And that the dad was very appreciative that I allowed him to do so. And it really made both of their days. So that was – because the kid couldn't have been much older than – I think he was like seven or eight years old mm -hmm. at the time but either way it was still really cool a moment that i won't forget and it just really sticks out because you never know what act of kindness that you do for somebody uh that that it could really just make their day so i'm glad i was able to provide that child with a memory that they'll never forget and hopefully i get to work with them coming up on the uh independent wrestling scene so that's my story oh that's so awesome i love that <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, of course. Yeah, because when, when, when you brought up the post, I'm like, what can I tell? Because like, I'm like, man, I want to participate. And then like after just a short while, I thought about that. I'm like, oh, that's perfect. It is. It is. That's so great. The littlest things make, uh, you know, can make somebody's day brighter, which is which is awesome. Oh, I love that. Thank you. And it can motivate you, to, to anybody to, you know, that, that, that one moment could be like, what really solidified, like really solidified what that, like, okay, I want to be a referee because not only did they get to slap the mat on an actual wrestling ring, but they had the crowd reaction with it too, yeah. you know? Aww. So, so they got to experience that rush of like, oh, cool. I caused this reaction as well. <laughs> like, so, so no, that was so cool. I really had a lot of fun with that. That's so fun. Thank you. Hey everyone. This is Alex Esteta, owner and promoter of Invictus Pro Wrestling. Uh, here to share a story for the Wrestling Positivity Project. Uh, I want to throw it back to our second ever show as a company. This was at November Rain, uh, which took place on November 7th, 2020 in Flemington, New Jersey. Um, main event time for that show. Um, right before the main event match had actually started, we had a fan uh, with special needs who was at ringside. He had made a very special sign for Ace Austin, who was wrestling in that match. Um, Ace Austin's opponent, the heel in the match, uh, due to a sort of error in judgment, uh, took the fan's sign um, and threatened to rip it, which made him 
legitimately upset, um, as one would be. Uh, eventually, he did not rip the sign, but he put it on the ground and stomped on it, which still made the fan uh, and his family extremely upset. Um, what ended up happening was the match went on. Uh, Ace Austin ended up winning. Um, and then completely, I had no say in this, uh, but I think it was a cool thing to do. Uh, Ace and our referee, John Albano, ended up bringing the fan into the ring um, to celebrate with his hero, Ace Austin. And I have some pictures of that moment uh, to show you guys as well. It was a really special time. Um, and looking back on the history of Invictus as a company was definitely one of the highlights for me. Hey, everybody. I hope you're doing well. My name is Phil Stamper, and I think one of the most amazing things our community does is when wrestling gives back to the community, um, not just our own community. And, you know, during the start of the pandemic, I think there was a big focus on a lot of people who were unemployed um, within our own community. And people would do things like buy each other's T-shirts um, just as a way to show support. And then even to the broader community. Uh, when uh, I can think of a couple of times when I was at events that were benefit events in the first place, and then there might be items for auction and people would win the item, then give the item back and still donate their money and then say, let's bid on this auction again. I remember IWC out in Pittsburgh did that uh, for a benefit they did for the school for the deaf um, called Deaf Wrestle Fest. Um, and there was like a football signed by the entire uh, Pittsburgh Steelers team and a wrestler bid on it, won on it, gave the football back to be rebid on again. A fan did it, gave it back so it could be bid on a third time. So it was just an amazing show of support. And I think that's when we really excel is when we do something for the benefit of our larger community. wrestling with positivity experience listen wrestling is nothing but positivity you have to bring your best foot forward and it's not just about the wrestling itself you know it's about everything it's about the whole day wrestling now to me is a day it's not just an event you know you you get to the arena you know you you meet new wrestlers you know you got to really come in to the building and come into wrestling with a positive mindset for the whole day and how can you not? It's wrestling. Like who? Like when you come to a wrestling event, it, it's always good vibes, and that, I think that vibe, the good vibes, is something that's really important when it comes to wrestling with positivity, right? Right. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> There's a small Duffy behind me. <laughs> 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 small Duffy. Um, yeah, but you've had some great, great experiences uh, with the fans. Obviously, I know you for for a while now. Uh, and I've witnessed like a whole bunch, but I'd love for you to share, uh, you know, some of the experiences that you've had. Oh, yeah, I've had some really amazing experiences with fans, actually. Um, you know, first, let's talk about Azalea, you know, uh, one of the greatest wrestling fans that I've ever met. Um, she and her mother, you know, they really put their best foot forward every single day and it's a real inspiration to see, you know, how hard she works and how hard her mother works, Melissa. And, you know, that also put, you know, that energy is transferred into me every time that I'm around, you know, or every time I see what they're doing. And same thing with Bob culture, you know, it's, it's the same thing. Um, all that, all that positivity around everything that they do is absolutely incredible. And, I can't wait. I, I continue to see all the improvements that, you know, they make. And I just, I, I, I'm in love with that family. <laughs> I know that you are too. And everyone that, you know, uh, deals with or uh, comes into contact with them. It's always something positive. It's always good vibes. It's always happiness. Never a dull moment around Azalea. 
Yeah, no, it's so much fun. And like I sit a lot uh, with uh, Melissa and Azalea at these shows and it's fun to watch her and how she also gets into the crowds at her making signs. If you guys didn't watch the first Wrestling with Positivity, Melissa came on uh, and talked a lot about uh you know with the disabilities and how people treat azalea and like everybody's just super kind and super nice and like you said family right like and this it's is a family it really it really is a family and she gets so lit up in the face and she's into it she's making the signs for you what's the sign you know the sign right that she makes for you what is it again the the <laughs> it's like <laughs> there's so I put many them on the spot the the, the... The, the signs that they make are so funny. Sometimes I come out and the first thing I see is the sign and all I could do is just smile. Yeah. Uh, like, how can you not? <laughs> how got, can you not? Or you got people like me who make signs uh, for you guys or, you know. <laughs> the, Fans are the best. Just a hot Fans mess. Are truly the best. Especially when, like I said, when they, when, when they come in with that positive mindset mm -hmm. and they're just here to have fun. The, there's never a dull show. There's never a yeah. dull moment on a show when... The fans are having an excellent time. So I have a Matt Vertigo wrestling with positivity story. So since we're doing this, oh. I'm going to give it back. You know, so it's funny, like being in the land of podcast land and being a fan, going to shows, being able to be backstage and interacting with you guys. I've become and I develop, you know, better relationships with you guys or whatever. And obviously anybody who knows me knows I'm obsessed with bridges. Um, yep. And you out here, <laughs> you got magic, break it out like, hey, hey, Tiff, Tiff. I hear you like bridges, and then you give me this freaking bridge, and I'm like, oh, my God. Like, I feel <laughs> a part of, you know, like, your guy's journey, and I was like, it makes me feel, like, really super special, too. And then again, like, at NFW, you did it again. I'm like, this perfect bridge. So now it's, like, the thing now, like, wrestlers are actually going out of their way to do bridges for me. <laughs> yeah, isn't it epic? Like, that's the... That, that's the relationship that wrestlers should have with fans. Yeah. Is those little things mean so much. Like, it, it really does. And it, and, and it doesn't only boost the adrenaline and the entertainment for the fans. It boosts it for us, too. You know, I'm thoroughly entertained Yeah. Uh, whenever you come to shows and you're talking about bridges. And I'm like, nah, I'm hitting a bridge tonight. <laughs> I'm hitting a bridge tonight. Tiff's here. I have to. Like, it and I, just changes everything. I it's, pop. It's fun. I pop. I I pop all the time <laughs> for, like, certain – the most craziest things, like, I pop for. And, like, bridges or – shout out to Arcadia, too. Like, you know, I call it the scissor cut thing as our joke. Um, you know, right and he that's told me <laughs> – that's your boy. And he told Ooh, me boy. after uh, one of the shows, he goes, I heard you. <laughs> <laughs> he's like i heard you he goes i heard you pop but i was like i did i did so uh it's it's uh you know it goes back and forth and that's why we have to share these beautiful stories uh out there with wrestling with positivity so, <laughs> so yeah that's why i always uh love to encourage fans to be very vocal at shows because we're listening and we're paying attention to everything that's going on and the more vocal you are the more that we're going to react to it so you know, bring your best shot. It's all fun here. All fun and games. Awesome. Well, thank you. Hi, I'm Val Pancakes from Omaha, Nebraska. And when Tiffany reached out to me about doing a video regarding positivity and wrestling, I immediately thought of my local promotion, Magnum Wrestling. They've been donating funds to local charities since 2014. Magnum Wrestling owner Jason Strife is a huge dog lover. And over the years, Magnum has donated funds to the Humane Society and is donating a portion from each show in 2022 to a different local animal rescue. Additionally, Magnum has also donated to MDA Omaha, the Make-A-Wish Foundation in Omaha, and Nebraska Suicide Prevention. Um, they've also assisted in starting a club focusing on body positivity at a local high school. It makes me proud to support a wrestling company that gives so much back to the area that supports them. What's up, everybody? Huge shout out to Tiffany, Queen of the Indies. Thank you for letting me be part of your Wrestling with Positivity uh, project you're working on. And I was asked to come on and tell a, a story of, uh, it's very impactful for me, obviously, if you're listening to this, you're a passionate pro wrestling fan like myself. I'm a lifelong fan. I was indoctrinated in it. Everyone in my family is a wrestling fan. So uh, here goes. This is from the heart. 
uh, about three, four, five years ago, some time ago, I had lost my job. I was down on my luck. Just really couldn't catch a break to save my life, honestly. I was doing odd jobs, trying to make ends meet in just the best I could do given my circumstance. And I had, scra I had uh, scrounged up and saved the money to hit my local independent show, PWX, here in Charlotte, North Carolina, because they had Matt Cross in town this month for their show. Big fan of the guy's work. He's top-notch. The whole deal couldn't miss it. So I had withdrawn the cash from my bank account to deposit bright and early Monday morning. The show was on a Sunday. Like I said, I was going to take the cash in and make my car payment. I come out to go to the show, myself and my wife, and I come to my car as we get ready to leave for the show to see that my car had been broken into, glass all over the place, the door was hanging open, and naturally, me being the rocket scientist that I am, of course I left my wallet in there with all the cash. That one's on me, but didn't make the situation any crappier, or any less crappy, I should say. So we filed the report, we called the police, and I was pretty much emotionally in shambles, but at that point, hey, I had paid for my ticket. I'm going to at least go see who I wanted to see. I fully planned on getting a picture with Matt Cross, buying his merchandise, supporting him. Went to the show. Great show. Obviously, we arrived late. At the end of the show, as I'm walking out, I see Matt Cross kind of gathering his things off in the corner by himself. And I couldn't resist the urge just to come up to him and tell him what a big fan I was, how appreciative I was for him coming out, what a great show he put on. And I told him what had happened. I said, hey, man, I fully planned on supporting. I fully planned on buying a T-shirt, some merchandise. But this, this, and this happened. And, you know, I'm dealing with that. So thank you for coming out. And he absolutely didn't have to do it. I had been out of work. Actually, I, I had a job at the time. I was working an hour away, working the graveyard shift for next to no money. But my career that I'd gone to school for, I'd kind of fallen out of it. I lost my job. It was a very unfortunate situation. Genuinely pretty just miserable altogether. And he could see it in my eyes. And Matt Cross insisted that I sit down. He threw his arm around me and basically told me it's all going to be all right. He told me to pull out my phone and he absolutely insisted on taking a picture with me. What a top notch guy. That little moment, even though he didn't make my car payment for me, he didn't fix all of my problems. But that moment, he took that time to be genuine to a person who was hurting, who went out of his way to go see him perform and me made me feel like, maybe it wasn't going to be so bad. You know what? I, I crawled and scratched and got out of that bad situation, got back on track as far as my career. And ironically, I now work with MLW, February 26th, Grady Cole Center, Charlotte, North Carolina. Let's hope that my camera lens didn't just flip this poster backwards. But February 26th, Grady Cole Center, Charlotte, North Carolina. And since then, while working with MLW, I've been in a room with Matt Cross probably seven, eight, nine times in the last few months. And I just didn't have the, I don't know what the word to say is. I just decided not to share that moment with him, even though we've been shoulder to shoulder in some instances, in uh, rehearsals, things of that nature, backstage. Who knows? February 26th, maybe I'll make it a point to share that story with him if he has the time. But it was a genuine moment. Thank you, Queen of the Indies. Tiffany, thank you for letting me share my story. Happy wrestling, everyone. Everyone enjoy. Uh, support your local indie, support all the companies around you. We need as many companies running as many shows as possible. If you love the businesses like I do, I want to see everybody succeed and win. Have a good day. So another wrestling with positivity story. So give it to us. Um, I got a couple stories. Um, one of my favorites, though, is uh, I was wrestling at Excite, and they're, like I got there probably like four hours before the show. And as soon as I get in, there's just these two little girls that run up to me and are asking for my autograph. And, like, that kind of shocked me because I wasn't really expecting anybody wanting my autograph or anything at that point. And, uh, like, I signed the autographs and everything, and my trainer actually took a picture of it and did a whole post about it. And I guess he talked to uh, their dad, and he was just telling them how, like, they came just for me. Like I was the reason why they had to show up for the show and stuff. And that honestly just meant the world to me. Um, to flash forward, like the next time I saw that little girl, uh, she was really excited to see me. And since she got one of my pictures last time, she wanted to give me one of hers. And she gave me a school photo, and I immediately uh, had her autograph it for me because, for as big as a fan she is, like I'm just as grateful that. I have someone that supports me like that. So, and I've had a couple of those kinds of stories, but I just know that little girl stands out 
the most to me right now. Right. It was my first time really uh, experiencing that, like, of having someone look up to me. Um, and then just recently, um, I actually had a close friend of mine from uh, way back in, like, middle school. I've been friends with this guy, and I haven't talked to him for a few years. And he uh, was hanging out with me the other day, and he told me, he's like, hey, you do realize you're the reason why I turned my life around, right? And I was just like, me? Wow. What do you mean? Like, what? And he's just like, I was in a dead end job that I hated, but like, I was like, oh, I'm an adult and I just have to pay the bills and stuff. And then I saw you wrestling and chasing your dreams. And I figured, yo, if TJ can do that, why can't I? And I guess he quit his terrible job. He got back into bodybuilding and he's, I think he's trying to join like, New, like the strongest man in New York competition or something like that. He was telling me something briefly about it. But uh, those are just two of the few things that kind of made me realize, like, this is why I love doing what I do, because even when I don't notice it, I guess I can still have an impact on other people. Oh, my God. No, you do. That's that's amazing. Like, oh, my God. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Uh, just from my point of view, but I know, like, you're doing it with everybody there. And like just hearing all these kinds of stories come out of the woodwork always just inspire me to do better because even the worst day in wrestling is still a pretty good day like i wouldn't want to be doing anything else and these stories just make me realize how grateful i should be to be able to be part of this world so miserable.